Hello, my name is Carol May Whittick and welcome to Her Conversations, Tools for the Awakening Woman. Her is an acronym for Higher Energetic Resonance. This is the optimal state to embody in order to attract our highest desires. Who is the Awakening Woman? She's the woman who's seeking a greater possibility in her reality and looking for solutions. She knows being awakened is not a lofty ideal but a necessity. If she can transform herself, she can change the world. Her conversations will introduce you to talented women who will speak to your spirituality, your sensuality and your soul. They share their stories and explain how they are in service to the world. So let their words and these conversations embolden and inspire you. My guest on this week's Her Conversations is author, spiritual guide and teacher Fran Lee. She specialises in guiding her clients to remember they are sovereign beings born to experience the abundant life of their choosing. During our conversation, Fran shares about how her life changed when she understood the universal principles and saw them working in her own life, the disconnect also that she witnesses on her retreats and why it's important as women for us to come together and overcome this. And we also discuss so much more. So as always, I begin by asking all of my guests, HER is an acronym for Higher Energetic Resonance. When do you feel at your most HER? I feel that I am most HER when I am in the silence. And when I am allowing myself to just, just be, not doing, but just being. Mm. And connecting to my higher consciousness and whatever that may be at that moment or that day. Sometimes it's sitting outside, um, just listening to the water or sometimes it's sitting in my prayer space and being thankful. Um, it's when I'm, when I find myself just really being and connecting to who I am and to the higher conscious that I feel like I'm most her. Great, thank you. And as with all the the ladies and the women that I speak to, you know, we usually come from very ordinary backgrounds before something happens within our lives that transforms us and kind of guides us into the work that we start offering as service. Can you speak a little bit about what led you into doing the work that you do now? Well, I was actually very resistant to do the work that I do now. Um, I grew up in a very diverse religious home. I grew up very religious and watched my mother, my grandmother, and my great-grandmother kind of be closet spiritualists. I tell people all the time I'm an old-time spiritualist. Mm -hmm. Um, I watched my mother and my grandmother do the work that I do now, but differently. Mm -hmm. They couldn't do it openly because it was not um, normal. So before this, I actually was um, a corporate babe, actually did, you know, worked in corporate, had a very, very demanding job and career and was doing what I felt was normal for me. You know, what I had saw as myself being normal and um, remembered really thirsting for knowledge of who God was, what God was, what this higher consciousness was why I had this gift of spirit, um, where did it come from? You know, just, just, I felt this really deep longing to, to know more about higher consciousness, to know more about God, to know more about the move of spirit. So I started studying and studying and praying and studying and life began to shift for me. I remember being waking up at 3.45 in the morning or 4.45 in the morning and being told to go sit on my couch or to grab my Bible and and sit and pray or, you know, things were just changing. My life was, wasn't what I had known it to be. I was feeling different. Um, I was more sensitive and more in tune with my gift. And So work was not as pleasant and doing what I did, even though I was really, really um, um, feeling like that was what I was supposed to be doing, it did not feel natural to me. What felt natural was me studying and connecting to my angels and, you know, helping people who needed answers. That felt more natural 
And um, I remember being told that it was time for me to make a choice. Now, all of my life, I had been told that there was something for me to do. And I think most of us, um, when we are around people who have a discernment of the spirit or a gift um, of insight, and they're connected to that, they can see you. They can see the light within you and kind of see what I call your soul's roadmap. And all my life, I've been hearing that. But when you're a teenager and you're young and you're, you know, hip and kind of doing what you think you should be doing, you don't want to hear that because that's not your path. And so I ran and ran and ran from it. Like, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. And I remember one day getting dressed for work and being told that I needed to make a decision. Um, and, 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 and this, this, this feeling, this overwhelming feeling of today is the day. Like you're going to either do what you need to do in this world, or you're going to be doing this mm -hmm. your entire life and not being happy. Mm -hmm. And I still didn't want to make the decision. I still was like, mm -mm, not doing it. And eventually I was put in a position where I lost my job and I really had to seek answers. And my path was one that was the less beaten path. And that's how I ended up here. Mm -hmm. That's why I do what I do. And I'm so thankful and I love what I do. Mm -hmm. And how did you start to pick up on, especially, you know, the thing that really drew me into the work that you were um, bringing forward was so much about manifesting and the, the mindset around manifesting mm -hmm. and the fact that the power is within each of us to do so. And I'm sure you're aware that the majority of people don't come from that mindset or we're not taught that anything good or bad is as a result of what we're thinking and feeling and projecting and creating in the world. How did you you know, where, when did it start where it started to be re really real for you? And then you started to see the differences within your life to be, then be able to really start to offer it to others and, and guide them to live their life that way. Well, that's, that's a really good question. I love that question because, you know, just from knowing me as you do, that I'm very passionate about us creating and manifesting and living in abundance. And what happened for me is I wasn't raised that way either. I was raised very frugal. My dad was very frugal and my parents owned businesses. So my dad was in control of the money and I would watch <laughs> my mother sneak and spend and buy what she wanted. But I was taught, save, save, save. You got to have it. You got to have it. And you have to work really, really hard. And again, as my path began to, to change, I was making really, 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 really good money. And I was looking at my job as the source of that money. Mm -hmm. So being, again, raised in church and raised very religiously, I was taught about the tithing, mm -hmm. you know, aspect. But you were taught you have to tithe, but you weren't taught about the windows of heaven opening up. And if you were, it was such a small blurb. You didn't get it. <laughs> you were just like, <laughs> you got to take your 10% in and you better pay your tithe and that's it. Mm -hmm. And so. What what really sparked this um, for me was I was seeing people who were doing way less than I was doing and not working near as hard as I was working and was enjoying their lives and living these dynamic lives. And I began to, again, ask, you know, my angels, ask spirit, ask God, how, what am I doing wrong? What's happening here? And at this point, I was led to tons of new thought teachings. But not only was I led to the new thought teachings, I was led to the prosperity within the Bible, the scriptures of prosperity within the Bible, mm -hmm. the millionaires that were in the Bible. And I began to write. And it, it's kind of like <laughs> it's kind of like a movie, really, because I began to write and read and highlight everything I could and compile everything I could. And I would sit and I would have what I call business meetings with my angels. Mm -hmm. And I would ask them, you know, you know, for the angels of abundance to come and how can I manifest and create this? And I begin to get the principles of how to live 
these lives. And, you know, sometimes you go and you sit in front of maybe someone who is teaching on the secret or the law of attraction or things like that. And they're teaching you these components like visualize, believe it, blah, blah, blah. But they're not giving you the meat of those things. Mm -hmm. So people were getting frustrated. What I saw was people getting frustrated trying to create because they didn't have all the components. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I began to put the practical spiritual teachings, the biblical teachings with this new thought teachings. And I begin to compare and compile information. And that's why I started to teach it because it's so simple yet so powerful. Mm -hmm. Once you understand that you really can manifest and create and live the life that you see for yourself, it, life changes. And that's what happened for me. After I lost my job, I had money saved. I had, you know, children, a home, you know, a, a, a husband. I had things I had to do and I had no idea how I was going to do it. But I realized that my job was not the source of my income, but the universe, God, my higher power was actually the source of my income. And if I could connect to and tap to that power of abundance and provision within the universe, I could live a better life than I ever, ever lived when I was working like a dog. And I'm not encouraging anybody to stop working and just sit around and try to manifest your life. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is even if you are working and you desire more, you are designed to have exactly what you desire. But you have to know how to put the energy in place to attract those things. Mm. so that's kind of why I do what I do and I love it <laughs> I can always tell there was a big <laughs> smile on your face when I watch it <laughs> I, <laughs> so, you know, I do like, I really love it <laughs> yeah it's so good and you know when you were referring back to the bible and kind of like looking back because obviously and, and I'm my background is from um, church as well. So the Bible centers heavily. So, you know, I know the teachings from that aspect. When you were kind of mm -hmm. underlining and like kind of reworking it and I would have, you know, m maybe not to put words in your mouth, but one one of the people that I recently just kind of refound, and I was aware of him before, but I really kind of like heard what he was saying this time around as Reverend Ike. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, um, I, you know what? I, go ahead, go ahead. I'm no, sorry. no, I'm, and I'm just saying because it, it's like I I realized that I was kind of like aware of him years ago, and I didn't quite get it at the time. And then also like you, you know, one of my first forays into kind of the law of attraction and that kind of thing was um, the new thought, the 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 the, new, the kind of the new thought period of time when it was. Um, uh, um Florence Scoville Shin is that the right I always get her name the wrong mm -hmm. way around you know and and everyone that came from that era and the the books that I keep going back mm -hmm. to and it was a book that was actually recommended to me by somebody that I used to go out with like, I don't even know why mm -hmm. he recommended that kind of book that book to me but it was you know <laughs> the, the game of life and how to play it and it was like a revelation to me and think and grow rich and the um you know the science mm -hmm. of of getting rich and all of these kind of things that were just like new new to me so so I was reading mm -hmm. that and it was, it, that was a revelation because that's not how I understood the way things worked. Um, but then mm -hmm. also when you were going back to the Bible, who, where were the surprises for, for you? You know, when, when you started to look at it with fresh eyes and, and to find where the abundance was, because that's not necessarily how I remember it. No, because, <laughs> because, this is, I, I'm so glad you said that because when I say that sometimes people go, ah, Fran, you're being kind of hard on, 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 you know, church. And I'm not being hard on church at all. Mm -hmm. I am not against church at all. Let me say that. I love God. I believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So let me say that first. I feel like, you know, I always have to put that disclaimer out there sometimes. Mm -hmm. But when you're in church, 
Um, I, I grew up Catholic and, and, and then Southern Baptist. So there you go. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was getting hit from both sides. You know, (laughs) you're not good. You're not bad. God's not going to bless you. You're a sinner, whatever. And so when you go to church, there's a lot of what I now call fire and brimstone teaching. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they've kind of loosened up a little bit. Like, you know, you have people like Joel Osteen who teaches prosperity and gets a lot of flack from it and, you know, things like that. But, um, you, back when I was little in church, I was scared of God, like, like petrified, terrified. Like I couldn't go to him for myself. It was just, oh my gosh, it was horrible. So to get out of that stigma was, um, you know, like hard. So there was a few things in the Bible that really, really made me say, oh yes, I can teach this Lord. And, and if you show me and guide me, I'll really teach it. <laughs> and the first thing was that it was God's good pleasure to prosper me. Mm. And I was like, Ooh, Ooh, like it was, it was that, 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 that God wanted me to have the things that I, I desired because if, if I have what I desire and I'm, and I'm, and I'm true to what I should be doing, then not only can I live a good life, but I can help someone else and teach someone else and light that path to, to, to take people back to, um, you know, that, that connection with God. Cause a lot of people disconnect from God because they feel like he's the problem. And I deal with people. I have tons of clients who, have, you know, been jaded by church or or a pastor or whatever the thing is. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing that you have to focus on is that God is not the pastor and God is not the church. Mm -hmm. You have to have that relationship with God for yourself. So that's very important. But the, the God's good pleasure to prosper me, that was like huge for me because I felt like God wanted me to get, give everything away and that it was easier for me to get into heaven being broke And, you know, all the stuff that you're taught in church. So that was one thing. And the second thing was that if I gave, it would be given to me good measure. Mm -hmm. And I was really not a tither at all, (laughs) at all at first. And I would do it because I felt guilty if I didn't. Um, And so I had to get the concept of, so what do you mean when you say give 10%? Like, why am I giving this pastor 10% of my money? I don't want to do that. (laughs) But I had to understand that it wasn't given the pastor. It was actually given back what had been given so I could make room for the flow. Mm -hmm. And those two things, when I got them, when I finally got my mind wrapped around those two things, I was just like, whoa. And then all the millionaires that were in the Bible. Mm. So, you know, it's, 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 it's amazing when you really understand that you can't be poor and be of service. Mm. It, it, God doesn't want you to be poor and he doesn't want you to live without. And, and that, changed my whole total I mean it put me in high gear like Mm -hmm. okay so you want me to have the things that I desire and once I got that concept and I began to stop begging in prayer and started affirming in prayer and started practicing what I was learning and then helping other people practice it life just changed so good thank you and can you can you remember your the first time when you actually really really got it and saw that you'd like clicked into it because I think also there's a lot of frustration for people when you know if they're Mm -hmm. they're watching certain films or thinking you know the secret was I think the one that really brought it into the mass consciousness in in the last couple of decades um Mm -hmm. that like you said, the, 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 when you look back on it, you realize there, there were certain elements missing because it was just about, you know, put a vision board up and just like wait for stuff to happen. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. when when did you feel that you connected all the dots and all the pieces and it was you you had it on, you know, you could just like think it, do it 
expect it and and it be there you know with the work as well because obviously it's it's not just a passive um situation Mm -hmm. when did you feel that you'd really got it and you know you had the magic in your hands I felt like I really got it and I had the magic in my hands when I wrote my very first prosperity covenant and that was about maybe oh gosh about 15 years ago so I I studied all of that too the secrets the law of attraction and you know the genie thing kind of did it for me with the secret like okay I can't imagine a genie giving me anything you know so I was kind of like I love the secret because I, I could see where it was coming from but it didn't so I begin again to to seek and ask. And I remember that Jacob in Genesis had wrote a prosperity covenant. Mm -hmm. So I began to kind of seek that out. And um, so I wasn't a big meditator back then. I was still a big pray girl. Like, you know, I got to get up at, and I still pray all the time, but I got to get up at five o'clock. I got to pray for 15 minutes. I got to read my Bible for 15 minutes. That's how religious I was. Mm -hmm. And, um, I remember reading about this, the prosperity covenant. And I was like, you know, God, I've been begging and asking you for this. And, you know, I've got these kids to take care of. I've got, I, you know, I need a house. And I was just having all these needs. And now, you know, that I teach it and I've kind of climbed out of that hole, I understand that I was in this really lack mindset. And I had this really lack mentality because I was begging for what I needed instead of tapping into already having that and acting as if and giving thanks for its, um, its provision in my life. And so I remember the covenant and I thought, okay, so this is really too religious for me now because I was so done with all that at that point. But I sat down and I said, okay, so I'm going to write this letter, which I teach in, in, my, in my mindset mentoring the prosperity covenant. And at this point, I begin to just kind of write my story. Like I wanted my life to be, I, I begin to, you know, say the things about the house I wanted. As I sit here and look out over the golf course now, I, I mean, I can remember it like it was yesterday. I, I said how many rooms I wanted it to have that I wanted this office and da, 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 and all this. And then I remember saying that I desire to teach and elevate consciousness and the people of con- and people's consciousness to reconnect them to their divine birthright which is prosperity and abundance and health love pockets bank accounts whatever the case may be and i promised god at that moment i committed to doing that and i remember having this feeling of when i when i put the letter down and um, my mother, by my mother being a spiritualist, I learned so much stuff. And I remembered when you want something, you fold it to you. When you don't want it, you fold it away from you. So it's like when you do full moon intentions and you're releasing, you fold the paper away. When you do new moon intentions and you want it to come to you, you fold the paper to you. Mm -hmm. And I remember as I was folding the paper to me saying, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I put that paper in my Bible and I let it sit. And I remember feeling like, I got it. This is it. Mm -hmm. I have just created my life. And three days later, and this is no joke, three days later, I got a check in the mail from a settlement on my car. It was something, some brakes or something. I got like a $600 $600 settlement. And then I tied $60 because I tied 10% to my mentor. Mm. And then the next day I made a phone call. I kept hearing, you need to call this place. You should call them and ask them if you can do an event. And I remember saying, I don't have the money to hire, you know, and then I clear cancel delete. And I called and they said, oh, we have a new space and we're just trying to get some publicity on it. You can have it for two hours for free. Mm. And doors just started flying open. And I remember my sister saying to me, like, 
gosh, you're almost like magic because every single thing I had put in that letter, in that covenant had come to pass. And I was so happy. And at that moment, I started (laughs) just creating everything I wanted. I wanted first class travel. I travel only first class now. And that seems vain and very materialistic, but it's about everything you desire. Mm. I desire deeper spiritual connection. I desire to hear clearer from my angels and, and my ancestors and my saints and guides and God and the Holy Spirit. And I hear clearer. It's almost like you tap into, <laughs> you tap into this flow and uh, you're like, wow, whoa. And sometimes it's scary because it's happening so quick. You're like, wow, this is good. So that's kind of how it happened for me when I knew I was in there, mm-hmm. when I knew that this, this was it. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. And also, and also without the effort, I suppose, as well, because coming from the place that we all come from where you have to like work and grind and hustle and all that kind of thing. And now suddenly it's getting into a completely different flow and just seeing things open up like that. I, you, it it mm-hmm. does seem magical. It does seem scary, but then, and then, then it just, <laughs> just the, it does seem wow as well. All of those things. I, I hear all of those things when, when you're speaking. Um, I wanted mm-hmm. to talk also about the, the retreats that you do because I see that you find some beautiful locations and you take your women away. What are you creating when you, when you do those, those week-long retreats, usually for a week, right? It's usually for a week. Um, so the one in Jamaica that we do every year, um, and that was pretty magical too and kind of manifested, um, and that's a whole other story, but... <laughs> The one in Jamaica that we do um, is a a Relax, Renew, Restore, and we go every October. And what we do there is we open the space for renewal of mind, body, and spirit. So this is really different than your typical um, retreat where you go and you have this thing, this thing, this thing, this thing. We have, you know, a morning ceremony. We have a um, afternoon ceremony, and then you have a lot of time to just be. Um, at, after those two things, we give you options to do this, 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 or to do nothing. Mm. And every evening, we have these conversations um, around just womanhood and sisterhood. And if somebody is feeling like, you know, I really need help with this and stretched to my limit. We have a conversation about that. So we have intentional conversations without intentional outcomes. Mm -hmm. So if someone is going through something and they need some support, we may talk about that. If we want to do the bus stop, you know, if we want to listen to music and dance that evening, we do that. Mm -hmm. Everything is done in a sacred space where I hold the container for you to be. You're pampered. Um, they're all inclusive. You get all the food you can you can eat, all the drinks you can eat. Somebody's at your beck and call twenty four seven, and we do it in five star resorts where I've built relationships over the years with people. I get it at such a good rate. Like if you were to call these hotels and try to spend that time there for that price, you'd never get it. Mm. Um, and I do that because I want to give the opportunity for you to create whatever you'd like to create. And I want to be your partner for a week and help you shift the mindset. So whether it's you need to shift your mindset around your healing or your business or, you know, your money or whatever it is, we work on those shifts during those retreats. Um, I also have one in California and I also do intensives with, with women. I usually have three women who will be with me for a weekend. And it's just us for a weekend. And we do that in California. And we start on a Friday and on a Sunday. And it's just digging into the trenches of the mindset and, and the mentality around creating and manifesting whatever it is you want. And 
breaking down those barriers and tapping into your soul's roadmap. And one of the good things about my retreats that are different is because I do have, you know, depending on where you come from, the gift of discernment, um, the gift of prophecy, the gift of, 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 of hearing or seeing clear audio, clairvoyance, whatever you, you call it. Um, I have that connection to the Holy Spirit. So you're not getting a textbook um, mentoring or a textbook coaching with me. You're getting information downloaded from spirit directly for you and your circumstances. And I think that that's what makes these retreats so powerful or any of my um, sessions are coaching or mentoring because it's really not what I've learned. It's what spirit is speaking to me to speak to you, which nine times out of 10, you've already heard, you know, it's confirmation. And sometimes you don't hear because you're so busy doing and not being. Yeah. So good. And working with the the sisterhood and, and how, what are you noticing when you're really digging into the sisterhood and creating that connection with women? Because um, I was speaking to another woman earlier today and doing another recording. And I was saying to her, you know, working working within this field and speaking to women on this level I think I kind of get a little bit complacent and spoiled and and still think that okay. this is like the majority because I know so so and I'm kind of like spoiled being in this um sector of wellness and spirituality where we are really supporting each other and yet I forget that we're actually mm-hmm. a minority still and um mm-hmm. you know and it, and it, it only got uh the only kind of resurface for me um, just in a conversation just recently that the work mm-hmm. that I do and the, and the outlook that I have is still considered to be almost impossible for many women. You know, how, how do you find, how do you break down those barriers with women when they come to you if they've not experienced that before? Well, um, that's that's really good. That's good. One of the things about me is that I really try to be as transparent as I can. And I'm very authentic. What you see is kind of what you get here. Um, there are layers to Fran, as there are layers to every woman. Um, and a lot of women, what, what I have found, not with the retreat so much, But with connecting with women in this field or women in general is that a lot of women will say, yes, I'm ready and I'm open. I'm ready. I'm open. Mm -hmm. But they're not. They are there. They still have their guards up. Um, There's still a lot of distrust between us. There's still a lot of um, I I don't want to say enviousness, but I will say misconceptions Mm. um, about us as women. We are still very, um, having a very physical um, experience. And some of us have not tapped into the spiritual experience of we really truly are like one. Mm. Like we, we, if you, if you, if you strip the clothes off and, (laughs) you know, you, you, you drain the color and we all stand side by side, we're really all the same people. Mm -hmm. Um, Our choices and our mindsets make us different, but we really still are connected as spiritual beings, period. Mm -hmm. What I find is a lot of women come that need healing of some sort. And when they're embraced by the caliber of women that are at these retreats, because I'm very... I'm not choosy, but I'm somewhat selective about who engages in this space because it's such a sacred space. Mm. It's it, it's created for this sisterhood. So I, I understand if maybe you come and you're a little wounded and you're not quite sure how to accept it, but we we give so much unconditional love. By the time you leave, you are not only open to the sisterhood, but you are preparing to offer that to someone else. Mm. Um, there, 
we have a lot of work to do in the arena of coming together as women. Um, it's, it's really, sometimes it's, it's, it's sad. It's sad to me because um, we don't understand the power of, of us as women. We are so powerful. Like we, we are the life givers. <laughs> we are so powerful. But if you understand how powerful you are alone, think about how powerful you are if you grab your sister's hand who may be struggling or who may not understand something or who may be wounded by a relationship or wounded by something and you you kind of stand with her in agreement and alignment that it's really, really going to be all right. That's huge. Mm. That's huge. And my prayer is that, that we do more of that. But you're right. We are the minority. We are not the majority. You're absolutely right. Mm. Yeah. It, it, like I said, it, it was a wake up call for me, you know, um, <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to remind myself that we're, we're only really at the beginning. Um, even though mm. it, it's felt that, you know, for, if I'm speaking from a personal point of view, I've been doing a lot of work on myself and, you know, the work continues till the day that the breath stops. So it's like, <laughs> I don't ever think I'm going to get there at all, but, um, but then having found my own um, kind of support system and, and I had to wait until I moved into this space as well. And it was only like a couple of years ago that I really could hand on heart say, I've got, I, I, there, there are ones that I know that I can go to with no side, you know, and, and it just mm-hmm. felt like I was flooded by this so that it, mm-hmm. and, and because then also I, I speak to women for the podcast all the time, they're of a different ilk and a different mindset that then it's I, then when I kind of step back into the world, if you want to say, and just realize this is not the case for anyone, everyone. And like you say, there is a lot of envy and jealousy and, and, mm-hmm. coffee and, oven and fear and all of these kind of things that um, many don't even realize that they're under and where it's coming from or think that there's, I think what, what came from the, the conversation that I had was not so much that there was an acknowledgement that it was there. It was more so that there was a resignation that there was no solution. And, and, mm-hmm. and, and from my point, you know, with, with me doing the the work that I'm doing with this podcast and speaking in a way that I think there could be a solution was completely mm-hmm. inconceivable that there would ever be a time when it would be anything other than the way that it is within that person's reality. Um, mm-hmm. And it just, you know, after the mm-hmm. initial shock and when I was waking up, you know, this morning and just thinking about it, it was like, you know, I've, I've got so much work to do. <laughs> in this world you know it's like there there really is um otherwise we're not going to be able to create the change in the world like you say the with the women to switch things up because you know the the guys have done what they've done and you know it's kind of gone down a, a path that is not really serving anyone men or women and it needs to kind of go back into the hands of the women and um what what are your thoughts on this I believe that you're exactly right. And I believe that as women, we, well, I was, I attended an event called Limitless Women, which I, I, I attend every year. Mm. Um, real good friend of mine puts it on. And um, one of the speakers were saying that um, in about, I think it's 10 years, maybe the next 10 years, mm. that women are going to be responsible for, $57 billion of the uh, American income. Mm. And um, she was talking about how if we could, <laughs> if we could own our own power without taking someone else's, yeah. how powerful we can be. And uh, I also have a lot of women clients and friends who feel like it's never going to happen too. 
Like we're never going to get this together. And, you know, sometimes I'm faced with the reality, not as much anymore, but when I was really trying to start my journey of getting out there and getting my YouTube out there and, you know, doing things and, you know, you know, just trying to figure this all out. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I cannot tell you how many times I got slapped in the face with no, or people would just not respond or, yeah, you know, you're not what we're, and these were women, women who had some who maybe had climbed up out, some who still were trying to make it. And, you know, everybody doesn't have a, you know, a responsibility to help you. But me as a woman, if you come to me and if you come to me and you ask me for something and you ask me how I can, if I, if I can help you, I'm going to help you. Mm-hmm. Now we have to be, I, I get that we have to be protective of our time. We got to be protective of our energy. We have to be protective of, you know, our circle. We got to be protective. I get that. But we also have an obligation to help our sister. That, that's your obligation especially if you have made it or you um, appear to have made it or, you know, whatever the case may be, you have that obligation to give back. Mm. It is your duty to give back. I think that a lot of us as women have this mentality that if I help you, I'm going to lose something. Right. Or, you know, if I'm nice to you, you may get ahead of me in the race. Mm -hmm. And that was another revelation that I came to is that there is enough for everybody and then some. Mm. Like there, there is so much to go around. And if you are linking into it spiritually, the more you give, the more you get. So, you know, if you need a reason, I don't, I don't need a reason to, you know, tell somebody it's going to be all right. Um, you know, I'm not one of the big, oh, I'm sorry that happened to you. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to take three or four minutes and I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to try to encourage you. That's just who I am. Of course, you can't do that with everybody, but you need to ask for discernment of when you should stop Mm -hmm. and when you should really give someone that time and attention, because you never know, you may be really making a huge difference Mm -hmm. in that person's life. I think we have a lot of work to do in that area. And grateful that you're, you're part of the part of the story to make the change as well. Like we need powerful women like you who, who've got a presence and, and the positivity that, um, I don't think anyone can question you. I think, mean, you know, when, when I speak to you now or when I see you, it's like, you can't, you can't, you know, sometimes you, you, someone is telling you something and you're like, is it really that way? But I never <laughs> feel any question around you, <laughs> if that makes sense. You know, it's like, I believe her. Well, thank you. You know, it's like, it, it feels like it's, she's, she's lived it and she's, she's kind of turning it around and offering it back. And I believe that she knows, you know, what she's doing so, so grateful to to have you around and grateful to learn from you and grateful to speak speak to you today as well so thank you and um well, like thank I you. <laughs> thank you I sent the you know uh, I'm a big cry baby so I'm trying not to cry here so oh you know, are I'm you big cry baby, so thank you <laughs> no, <laughs> no so honestly it's a, it's a it's a real um honor to speak I mean you know when I'm thinking about this idea that I had for this podcast and and all that I want to make it into it really helps for me to see women that uh you know five ten twenty steps ahead of me and what they've created from their ideas and their visions and it, it just really keeps me going and also when I kind of reach out to them and go would you like to be on my podcast you know and 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 they can recognize what I'm trying to do and and reach back it's it it really helps me as well to kind of keep going because you know when like I say when I when I kind of meet with women who just don't understand any of this and realizing that there is Mm -hmm. there is value in what I'm doing and what I'm creating but 
it's still so much so much of his it is unseen you know, with I'm sure because you have a podcast as well you realize that a podcast isn't what creates <laughs> you know the the income for you at all but it's but mm-hmm. yeah I feel really driven to keep doing it you know even when I have to sit down and mm-hmm. edit and and I'm tired and I want to do it and things uh, other things like sleep mm-hmm. <laughs> something basic mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. um <laughs> It it just really gives me so it it really just gives me so much pleasure and even though even though it's not fully visible it's like I just can I can really see like kind of ten steps ahead of it you know and and it's times when when things kind of get shaky and and reality you know the real things that I have to deal with come in every now and again it's like I just need to keep going with this and I've kind of got to the point where I'm like I can't drop it now I really you know I really can't drop mm-hmm. it now because I want to be part of all those women that I really respect and see doing the work and creating change and and also living a life of abundance where you can call in what you want and you can apolo- un- unapologetically get from A to B in first class. You're doing work when you get on the other side. You don't want to be tired, you know? So, so why not? Why not have these things for yourself? So um, yes, grateful that mm-hmm. you, you came on and I want to ask you these questions, like I said, and the first one is what is the best piece of advice a woman has ever given to you? Wow. The best piece of advice would be, um, given to me by my mother which you know when your mother's giving you advice you're like yeah lady no (laughs) um you know I don't want to hear it um but you know the best piece of advice my mother gave me and it's the truest piece of advice and it is you have to have faith Mm. you you have to have faith when when you don't when it doesn't look like you should have faith Mm-hmm. when nothing's working, when nothing's moving in your physical uh, existence, you have got to have faith. You cannot be negative and expect good things to happen. You've got to have faith. And my mother talked about faith so much that we would just be like, this lady is really lost it. I mean, yeah. no matter what was going on, she would talk about having faith and having faith. And I remember when I was studying, I remember, you know, studying about fear and fear is false evidence appearing real. And then I remember studying about faith and the mustard seed. Mm -hmm. And I remember buying mustard seeds and looking at them and saying, that is an awful tiny seed. (laughs) Um, I know that I I have more than that, right? And so I would put these seeds in my wallet and carry them around. But really, it was just to believe in what I could not see. Mm. And I think that was the best piece of advice because to that to this day, that's what keeps me going. Mm. When I have a vision, when I have a, a dream, when I write down something or I'm in prayer and I get a message and the message seems extremely huge and really way beyond what I think is capable or I'm capable of, I tap into that faith Mm -hmm. and I trust something that's so much bigger than me that has the power to create every single thing. Mm -hmm. And I keep going. That's the biggest piece of advice such a good one and what woman would you say represents higher energetic resonance to you I think all the women who I think every woman who is standing up like you you represent that to me Mm -hmm. I'm so thankful for this podcast I think it's dynamic and I and I know it's going to do amazing things in women's lives I think any woman who is strong enough to extend their hand to another woman, regardless of what happens. Any woman who stands up in their authentic truth 
and and when you say authentic, you know, I think that sometimes it's overused because people think, oh, you should be authentic and just tell all your business. And that's not what I mean. What I mean is standing strong enough to lead by example, be an example, but also being authentic enough to say, I don't know it all, but I'm willing to try to figure it out and I'll figure it out with you. Um, I absolutely adore um, Michelle Obama because who, who doesn't? And yeah. I, 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 you know, I absolutely love even, I mean, I love Lady Gaga because oh, gosh, yes. I, I see how she's, oh my gosh. Like, I'm like, dude, <laughs> like <laughs> you rock, you know, like you are the bomb. Yeah. I, I love women like that. Women who are strong enough to say, yeah, this is it. You know, this is who I am. This is it. And I can be that woman and I can be this woman too. And I can still be me by being all of these women because we truly are all women. We're, we're every woman. Yeah. So those women like that, that represents that, that her to me. Mm. Two excellent yeah. examples. Have you, have you um, read Michelle's book? I'm saying Michelle like we're friends. I have, <laughs> like we're friends. Like, hey, yo, what's up, Michelle? How you doing? Uh, she may be listening. You never know. Um, it's, not in, it's not impossible. Um, I have not. I listened to it. I listen to a lot of Audible. So I buy all the hard copies. Mm. I have an extensive library of books. <laughs> I love books. And um, I buy the hard copy um, and I listen to the Audible when I'm traveling. Yeah. But I also go back and read what I've listened to. So I've listened to parts of her book, but I have not listened to the whole thing, no. Sure. No, I, I, ha- I don't have the hard copy because I was traveling at the time, so I had it on Audible. And, I mean, it's, it's a mm-hmm. long book anyway. And one, what's really good about it is she reads it. Um, and oh, that's good. I, I took... I'm, I eked it out because usually when I get a new book on Audible, I'll just I'll just plug into it until it finishes. <laughs> but with that one, I mm-hmm, just I, mm-hmm. re- I eked it out. I made it last m- way longer than it needed to, and it was just so mm-hmm. such a great story. And but you know when you say story, like it sounds like it's fiction. It's like such a great telling of her life and such a great journey. And another overused word, but it right. it really was just just amazing to listen to you know where she came from and where where mm-hmm. she where she's been so far because she's not finished you know they they're just kind of refiguring what they're doing oh no people aren't going to yeah, let her rest she's not finished. no 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 and, and, and you know what i don't think that anybody's going to let her rest i mean i i, I think that I, that's another thing i think i think when you have work to do i had the pleasure of um spending some time at own studios and, you know, rubbing those with the great and, you know, and I, I look at, I look at people because I can read energy, of course. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I see when people are tired, like some days I'm tired, like it's time to, you know, it's time to (laughs) record a video. And I'm like, Oh, I don't have it in me today. I just can't do it. Mm-hmm. You know, and, you know, my, my daughter or, 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 you know, my partner is saying, yeah, get your butt in there and do it. You got to do it. This is, this is what you got to do. And I think about that. And I was listening to Oprah talk about how she has done so much in her life and she's ready to sit down. Like, <laughs> she's like, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to rest. I'm tired. Yeah. I want to sit down. And I was like, man, you know, that must be like dynamic to be able to say, I'm ready to sit down because I've done a, a lot. But as she was saying that, I was hearing, you know, Spirit was saying, but you're not even done yet. Mm-hmm. Like, you're not even finished. Like, you've got so much to do. You're not even done. And I, I think about that with, with like Michelle, with, with just people in general. It's like, I know that I'm not done. You're not done. Mm-hmm. But I don't even think the I've very started. thing, <laughs> you know, when. Oh, when... no, you haven't. 
Yeah. Right. And the very things that drive us, though, the very thing that drives us is the things that will keep us going, which is we really don't do any of this alone. It's really spirit driven. It's really all about spirit. We don't get it. We feel like, okay, I have to do this or gosh, it's time for me to do this. And I, but really it's spirit that's leading you. You were called by spirit to create this, this podcast. Mm. This is not, this is not, you didn't just sit one day and say, oh, I think I'm going to just take on all this work and I'm going to <laughs> create this podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, no, spirit said, this is what you have to do. You were sent here to do something. And as we all were, we all have this soul's roadmap that sometimes we never tap into and we feel unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think, I think that there's a lot of work left to do. And I think that we have a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. And gladly, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm happily ready to be used to do what needs to be done, you know, just to feel useful in, in, a, in, a, in a valuable way, as opposed to just kind of making, making stuff for the sake of making stuff um, and making, right. use of, making use of talents, making use of ideas, meeting and um, yeah, when I when I feel into it, there's an excitement. I don't know what shape it's going to take. Ultimately, I have ideas, but you know, you never know what really it turns into until you just kind of mm-hmm. follow it through. Yeah, and um, I agree. <laughs> talking about sleep, <laughs> what is your favorite self care <laughs> ritual or practice? If sleep is one of them, sleep is one of them. Um, <laughs> my <laughs> it is one of them. My body. Uh, automatically gets up it has an internal clock and I think that happens when we get older um but I love to travel and get by the water Mm. so if I can get to an ocean that's my favorite place to be and that's my favorite one of my favorite self-care rituals every three months I will take a break Mm. um I've experienced burnout I've experienced giving too much which is one of the reasons why I created the retreat I've experienced you know spirit having to lay me down and say okay we're gonna make you sick because you're not you're not listening to take a break Mm. um so that's one of my favorites um as well as I love music I love all kind of music it 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 doesn't matter it can be um hip-hop to classical I love everything in between country all music so when I'm really needing some downtime and I cannot you know, just break away, I will listen to music and I will dance around my house and I will just chill. Um, I also love my, my animals, my dogs, spending time with my dogs. That's also really good for me. Mm. Great. Who are you listening to at the moment, music-wise, just out of interest? Uh, actually, you know, I'm listening to, uh, I'm going to probably say her name wrong, Kalani. Oh, that's right. Kalani. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yes, I'm listening to Kalani. I love her album. I was listening to one of her songs that my daughter was listening to. And I said, I like her. And I went to her album. And I just, I love her music. Um, so I'm listening to her. I'm also listening to, um, I listen to a lot of reggae. So I listen to Chronics. I love Chronics. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've been listening to chronics and I have a client who loves Celine Dion and was talking about her the other day. So I tuned into her radio station. So she's I have fantastic. a very bad. Oh, she's amazing. She yeah. can sing, 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 sing. Oh my gosh. I remember yeah. she remade all by myself and I was just like, who is this woman? Mm. Yeah. The powerhouse. Yeah. So those are what I'm listening to right now. Great stuff. Yeah, um, Celine Dion, yeah, the just legendary voice-wise. Kalani. Oh, she's done the Yeah, I'd love to see her in Vegas. What is she done now with that at some point? You know, I don't know if she had a baby. So I don't know if she's done with oh, it can, or not. I know not. Kalani had a baby, but Celine Dion. I'm, get, I'm, I'm speaking. Oh, she's people. in Vegas. Oh. She's still there. Oh, she? I'm sorry. Yeah I, think she's, yeah, I think she still has residency there. But she was talking about finishing her tour in Europe or, or yeah, in Europe, I think. So, 
maybe I don't know yeah she's amazing yeah but yeah Kal- I mean Kalani I only know maybe two of her songs and then she did one with and they're both duets she did one with Cardi B and then there was mm-hmm. the one that she did with Charlie Puth sounds a little bit like Wham that's kind of why I really like the song because like it just sounded so familiar I'm like why did like Wham I'm talking <laughs> like people be like what um I love Wham you talking yeah. about George Michaels oh yeah, my god George yeah Michael, yeah yeah but there's there's a, a song that she did with and it's what my song like if I go onto Spotify it's one of those ones that I play out I just put it on repeat completely and um it just uh-huh. it just reminded me of early Wham that kind of like oh I love sweet, Wham that sweet soul kind of thing as well and it really got me in because I kept hearing this song and I'm like this song reminds me of something else um uh-huh. great song and it reminded me of that but that's how I kind of tapped into her so I I'll, I'll look into her album because I really like the tone of her voice so I'd be interested to find out yeah what she, what she sounds like because she's just got that real she's just got that kind of real sweet voice that I like all different kinds of voices you know like which is why I'd like to uh-huh. Celine Dion and say Celine Dion and Kalani in the same breath. They're completely different singers. Right. They are. They are. And, you know, I listen to Cardi B, too. Every now and then I listen to Cardi B. Mm. Sometimes I, I like, I like hip hop. I, I don't like the brass hip hop. I, I can't do a lot of F's and B's and MF's and I can't do all that. Mm. You know, every now and then I'm just kind of like too much, turn it off. But, <laughs> you know, I, I think I like Cardi B because I like where she came from yeah, and you know, where she came from. Cause she also is a representation of everything in this life being possible. Mm. Mm. So I, I kind of like the underdog stories. I like, mm. I like the underdog stories. Yeah. yeah. I like when people show, you know, that if you trust and believe it, it it's coming to you. Yeah. Yeah, I love I love yeah. her story and her personality, and and it's not just her; it's oh, also her and her publicist as well. As I follow her publicist and um, on Instagram, and her publicist is a powerful woman as well. Actually, you know the way that she's moving. She's very powerful. Yeah, so I, and I like the dynamic between the two of them, women working together. It's just I think it's a great, great representation of what can what can happen when you've got that sisterhood because they both met each other when they were just both starting out and look what they've created so far so Mm -hmm. so good together together like what they've created together yes isn't that amazing I think it's so good it's so inspirational it really is it really is so Mm -hmm. yep what is next for you Fran what's coming up what can you talk about and let everyone know that you're doing well, I am, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing a lot, a lot I can't talk about, but a lot I can. Um, mm-hmm. I will be in um, California and Santa Monica in June, um, actually doing a meetup and a live there, um, is having intentional conversations. So I will be in California in June. I'll be in California in August. Um, I also am working on a new book I've written three books four books I don't ever talk about them I love them they're great they just sell themselves but I'm working on a new channel book for some information that I received that's really relevant to now and women and sisterhood Mm -hmm. Um, I'm excited for this retreat I can't I can't wait and actually I'm just kind of doing what I'm led to do I've learned to listen really well and just kind of do what I'm led to do. And where can everybody find you online? Your your online addresses, social media handles. Oh, okay. Um, my social media handles are Angels with Fran, just like it sounds. Angels with Fran, and um, my website is www.angelswithfran.org. Um, if you put in Angels with Fran usually everything about me pops up <laughs> almost <laughs> immediately, which is pretty cool. I'm kind of like, I'm exposed now, I'm out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's how you can find me. You can also drop an, an email if, you, if you'd if like to chat um, at fran at angelswithfran.org. And also I'll recommend people just kind of tap into your YouTube videos as well because they're really informative oh. and really fun. So don't forget to mention that. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, so thank you. I, for, I almost forgot about that. See, I've blocked it out because I'm so, yeah. Um, YouTube, my YouTube channel is Angels with Fran TV. Mm-hmm. And um, there's, there's a lot of free content on there. And I also have a podcast on iTunes called Fran's Wisdom. And I think that if you have iTunes, you can just put that in. Or if you put Fran's Wisdom in, I think it comes up. Mm. So yeah, you can find me. I'm 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 around, and I would love to chat and to say drop in and say hi. I love that. Brilliant. Let me give you another tip about um, Apple uh, iTunes or Apple Podcasts. If you've got Siri, I think most phones have got Siri now, and you speak to Siri and tell the name of your podcast, it will direct you to it. Really? I didn't know yeah. that. Okay, I'm going to have to try that. Yeah. Um, I, I, listen, it's it's, I am, a, little, it's am, a little game that I like to play every now and again. <laughs> just to see if you're coming up? Well, yeah, I, um, I had somebody... Really? Yeah, I mean, I got an email. It was a while ago, actually. Um, maybe a month or, or two months ago, I got an email from Apple. And they said, now Siri uh-huh. is lined up. If you kind of talk to Siri and say the name of your podcast then it will come up so I did it and I actually script I recorded the screen doing it so obviously it didn't hear my voice externally but it kind of got to the podcast and it started playing one so I recorded the screen and put it on Instagram because I was just so I was just so wowed by the whole thing yeah <laughs> it will do it oh wow I definitely have to do that yeah I, I had no idea mm-hmm. I didn't know that I I, yeah, I'm, I'm learning so much about the tech. My, um, my daughter's the tech girl, my son, he's 15. So, you know, you, you can say anything, Hey, can you find this? And he can, and you're like, Oh, okay. So now slow down and take that 10 steps so I can find it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a, I'm a, I'm so, a yeah, fan I will of tech. that. Yeah. I love, I love. Are you? Me. Oh gosh, yeah. Like, and which is kind of why I got into, you know, doing the podcast, and then also like all the little things that you can create through social media. And I, I do graphics and and websites on the side as well. So you know, I, I I like the fun of it and all the little companies that are set up just to make your life easier, so that one thing talks to another. I I, I absolutely love it. Oh gosh, and I need to have a conversation with you because I. <laughs> Um, I, I actually looking for a web designer. We were doing that, and we are actually looking. We're I'm I'm tech savvy. Like every Apple device and thing, I have it. Mm-hmm. But there's so many hidden again, like us women. There's so many layers to it. It's hard to find. You have to really stay up on it. And I don't think I have time. It moves. It do, it does move quickly, and I'm probably not as up to date well I'm kind of back into it as well because I I can see the way it's going um but Uh I I I just I'm just excited by the things that are possible because one I wouldn't be able to do this right now if it wasn't Uh the way that technology is set up and what I always remind myself is as amazing as we think the things are that that can happen now there's going to be a time in the future where we look back on our iPhones and our tablets and everything, and they'll look clunky and archaic. So I'm just, you know, right. trying to like keep abreast as much as possible with what what's available because it's allowing anyone who has the time or, you know, the, the, the will to kind of bring something to the fore to actually create and be a content creator to create a media media and business and have a voice in the world whereas before these these things like this would be impossible you know to for us to be able to have a program that can go worldwide which is mind-blowing at the drop of a like a second at the push of a button when would that happen I mean you if you wanted to broadcast you'd have to you know make an application to a radio station and have an interview and this and this and this and this and And it's just leveled the playing field for anybody who is prepared to put in the time and just learn some basic skills or outsource it if you want to and you can you can create what you need to create yeah yeah, I'm. Yeah, that's what I. That's what I said. We need to have a conversation. If you do all that, that that see how divinely the universe just works. I was just asking. 
for my team because we have so many things happening. Mm. And look at how, look, just look at how God just kind of drops you right in my lap. That's how it works. Every yeah. time you ask and you release attachment, it is given. Yeah. It's amazing. It's so yes. Yeah. It's so good. Yes. 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 <laughs> amazing. Brilliant. <gasps> Well, I just want to let me just wrap up on this and and say thank you for responding. And, you know, it took a moment for us to kind of connect. But then when it came together, it came together at the right time. And I'm grateful that you were you kind of reached and reached over and said that you'd be part of the podcast and 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 brought your wisdom and your story to it. And like I said, I'm always amazed when someone responds and says yes, because it's ultimately it's just me creating this thing and and going with the mustard seed of the idea that I have and and it's great when I see women who are steps ahead of me that kind of recognize it and actually come and put their voice to what I'm creating and it and it just kind of fills me up with it's it's getting there it's going the right way so I'm grateful and thank you well you know what thank you very much I am honored to to help you I'm honored to that you ask me. So thank you very much for the opportunity to not only speak to you, but to speak to your listeners and to be a part of what I think is a fabulous movement. So thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Perfect. Thanks to Fran for joining me on this episode of Her Conversations and thank you for listening. You can discover more about me by visiting my website, carolmaywittick.com. That's C-A-R-O-L-M-A-E-W-H-I-T-T-I-C-K.com. And also you'll find out more about Her Life Academy. And if you're listening at the beginning of May and you've still not signed up via the link on my website, please do so. Something really exciting is happening in the next couple of days. You can also follow me on Facebook under Carol May Wittick. My Instagram name is Kazmik, that's C-A-Z-M-I-C-K. And Her Life Academy is at Her Life Academy on Instagram as well. Also, I'd appreciate you leaving a comment, liking and sharing any episodes. And if you subscribe on your chosen platform, you'll be notified as soon as an episode is published. So thank you again for listening. Until the next episode, have a great week. Bye.